they might even try to end the game early with this. This this is not what I expected after the first three picks. Medusa Shaker is like, okay, very defensive, high ground centric. Magnus is like, okay, even more high ground holds. AoE team fight, anti BKB. And then Shadow Shaman's like, oh, okay, now they have some early game. And then Brewmaster is like, well, now we actually have a lot of early game. And I've seen teams end the game with the Medusa after her first item. She gets Scotty and then they just push. They just five man down yeah. mid. Yeah. Especially with like some big ultimates like Black Hole and. And they Shadow have the Shaman Warps. Yeah. So this is. This could work. But they're laning stage. They're it's looking a little weak now. You've got a Shaman who needs a lot of levels, can't really do too much early. Brew and Magnus, one of these has to go to the off lane, and it's not going to have the easiest time. It depends on what Secret picks for S4, though, right? Just, right. Like, they could easily do like a, oh, let's see. Do, do they do they even think about like the Bristleback still? Very good against Brew. Bristleback's decent. They, I, I think they need, they might need better lanes, though. I think they probably want to, I mean, I guess Bristleback's pretty safe here. Oh, Necrophos. Can be the, the solution to a super tanky Medusa. And with this secret, have a lot of damage. And it also gives them a nice mix. They had a lot of physical damage coming into this pick, but they balance it out with quite a bit of magic as well. Necrophos is going to... Uh, this is a tough to execute lineup from Secret. Like, they don't really have that great weight of initiation, aside from, like, swapping a call, like a... Maybe the Blink Necro ulti, yeah, although it's a little ulti. gimmicky. Blink call, as opposed to Rave, you have Fissure Blocks, you have Brew, Blink Split, you have Blink Clap Split, you have Shadow Shaman, Blink Ward, uh, Hex, Magnus with Blink RP, Blink Echo. I Rave has a lot more ways to initiate. I will say Secret's two cores, the, the Shadow Feed and the Necrophos, are very good at zoning and just dominating offlaners that are melee. You've got the Necrophos Heartstopper R, you walk into CS, you get healed, well, nuked by the heal, I should say, and I imagine it's going to be Arteezy still going mid. So with that, Necrophos potentially laning against a Magnus or a Brew, not the easiest lane for them. And it's not like Rave really have an offensive tri lane potential here. Prepare for battle. They can still, I, I think, two on one, uh, two supports row mid a lot too. Venge isn't the greatest defensive support. Uh, especially if someone gets Fissure Block, they're, they're going to die early. So I think they can actually maybe focus their efforts on RTZ this game. I have seen that backfire a lot, though. <laughs> so. Yeah. Puppy and, and Kuro have been very timely on their rotations. Even Zai coming mid at times. And on a, on a hero like Axe, that might be the case here as well. Guys, it's time for Secret versus Rave. Rave currently 5-5. Five and five. They're t currently 8th place, but a loss here puts them in the danger zone of starting in that lower bracket. And... They're not actually guaranteed to go to the main event just yet, though. They're getting close to that stage. Secret looking to continue their undefeated run here. And we introduce the teams now. Secret defending their jungle, wanting to protect that Enigma's early farm. We've got Kuroki on the Venge. Arteezy playing your Shadow Fiend. Puppy, the Enigma, S4, the Necrophos. And it leaves Zai as the offlane axe. As for Rave, Jo going to be handling the Medusa, the Snake Monster. NB, Ninja Boogie, going to be on your Shadow Shaman. Ryo playing the Brewmaster, headed to the safe lane for now. Chrissy. We'll be rushing the bottle as the Magnus, and that does leave Cast on the Earthshaker. I, are they running the Medusa mid? Yeah, looks like Medusa mid. Okay. And Magnus offlane with Fissure Blocks to help. It, it's a dual um, melee offlane, which is extremely weak, but at least they have the Fissure Block to make the couple of waves easier. Puppy denying the first creep in mid will also make things a lot more easy for Arteezy. So that <laughs> that's... I don't want to say like two lanes one, but it's it's, it's already close. it's a good start. It's a good start for them. Yeah, and this is the the main danger when you're running the the Magnus and Brew together, and you have a hero like Medusa that isn't going to dominate her lane per se, but more just going to sit there and farm. Somebody's going to have a bad time. Yeah, I also think Secret's off lane is stronger too. Axe versus a very low armor hero and very slow hero like Shadow Shaman is even the Brew has two armor. It's not that great. Yeah, Brew is somewhat susceptible to the X spins too. So, yeah, uh, can't it, drunk and haze those. Yep, that's a bit of a concern. Or dodge. Yeah, it's a really nice uh, build from Shadow Shaman though. He really needs boots first because he needs to exert pressure onto the Shadow Fiend, punish Enigma for being a greedy hero in general, and also he has to be able to run away from X. X two ninety, not the best move speed, but certainly better than than Shadow Shaman's without boots. So one thing we haven't discussed is that Secret are very good at taking Roshan. Enigma can solo it with the Venge, Shadow Fiend. It gets super easy. And the Necrophos, who can help keep them healthy. There's pretty much no way Rave can contest that. And the Rave can't. They Roshan. can't scout at all. They need they, they need their Blinks. And even then, just to go into the pin, even then, they're not going to have easy ways to get Vision. 
it's a real big problem for them. I, that's that's the thing about their their line the Roche lineups. Like you have an even game, and then you take one Roche, two Roche, three Roches, and then eh, that's that's simply game because it's so close before so, uh, something simple like that can upset the balance very easily. It's a battle hunger first build from Zai, something that you don't see very often. Uh, huh. But it is nice versus a ranged hero with boots trying to zone you out, especially yeah. since they the regen's going to be limited for Ninja Boogie here. Brewmaster also doesn't have a south, so he can't really help uh, Not so help far. the Shadow Shaman with that. Yeah, it seems like a really nice adjustment, and that Shadow Shaman not getting off any early pulls, and also not doing much to keep Zai out of the lane, who's got the pulled regen. He's still sitting on four tangos on top of it. Just needs to get to the Tranquil Boots early. As you can see, Cast is now rotated mid, looking to protect J.O., maybe set up on Artesio, though. It's not like you really have a whole lot of killing potential here early on. I suppose a bit worried about those Vengeful Spirit ganks, but Enigma not likely to join, and they do see her in lane. Is he going to do some stacking? He's not really doing much right now. Venge? Oh, no, the, the Earthshaker. Oh, Earthshaker? It's like Enigma's not going to gank you at one and a half minutes, and they see the Venge. I mean, he might be looking for a block like this... I can't That's true. The angle, but it's, I mean, it's Dusa though. Is Dusa really going to be able to get a kill? Yeah. Him That's kind early? of the issue here, I feel. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I mean, he, he can't really do that much else, though. So it's not like they can kill her, kill a uh, axe on the bottom, especially not with his positioning. Yeah, the Fissure comes out from Art uh, on RTZ, but still 10 CS early. Having a great start. And I'll TSC the Medusa. You're doing this at level 1, it's it's only going to get easier. Well, now, now level 3, but. Off to a fantastic start. Bottle up, boots coming soon, and at the same time, Chrissy has secured his own bottle. He's actually doing all right in terms of levels here. That fissure block helping out quite a bit as he hits level two and change, and keeping up almost with Zai. This creep wave, once this is done, he should pretty much be even. But still, Enigma's just getting so much, and they aren't really getting that much out of their other lanes. So, I mean, Ur Urshaker's just kind of sitting there doing nothing. He's level one. He's out of clarities right now, so he's kind of a dead hero right now. Uh, Shadow Shaman had to spend a lot of time trying to zone out the um, zone out the axe. He's not really stacking or pulling, so Sacred is going to pull very far ahead in this uh, first 10 minutes of the game. Or it's setting up to be that way at least. There's no smokes uh, on Rave too, so that means pretty much no pressure out for Shadow Fiend because Dusa can't really pressure. And the issue is, even if they had smokes, their their laners are just not very good at getting early kills. Like a, a brew. This brew lane is not an easy kill because it's a, a melee here going up against an axe, and the axe is having a good start. Oh, speaking of which, Sai walks in, he doesn't have a point yet in Berserker's call, and they try to turn on him, not getting many spins, but there's always that danger of a quick double spin. So they can't really commit. But yeah, like you're not, we already talked about, it, you're not really going to gank Oh, he's going for so. a spin on Re. Oh my goodness, he is a spin lord. Oh my gosh. I thought he was just going to back off. He just hit level four, and then. Oh, he got a point in call. Yeah, he got a point in call, and that well, took the I Brew completely airballed the camera for that. Brew also picked up a boots as opposed to a bottle, or sorry, bottle as opposed to a boots. And I think that you have to get boots versus an axe, so you don't get caught by the call. Oh man, giving up a solo kill in this dual lane is just a terrible way to start things. Tranquil boots now online. They're gonna go on Zai here, but realistically, they have to be worried that he turns and with a couple spins, even potentially kills Ryo. He gets off the call, but he is dropping low to this. He needs like two more spins. Battle hunger, not gonna get it. Well, he's so manly. I think he can back off and kite with his... Uh, well, you know, sometimes you're feeling the spin lord, you know? <laughs> he's like, the first time it worked, I should just do it again. But that's that's important. Right when he's starting. Still, it's going to be a good lane for Zai. But, and with the Tranquil Boots, he can just easily go jungle if he needs to. Yeah, that w I mean, that's a big blunder, though. He, he, he could have punished Brew for going the bottle first by just controlling the lane and out regening him with Tranquil and it, controlling the room. It also gives Ninja Boogie a lot of levels. He's hit level four, and this is without, I don't think he's even done a single pull yet. So suddenly that level six early wards, it's its a possibility. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna see our first smoke anytime soon here from Secret? Nothing just yet. They'll toss out a Fissure, but you can see Artiz, he's generally been hugging like this area of the ramp, so it's not easy to get those Fissure blocks. His position has been immaculate so far. And they, in that position too, it's very easy for Nigma to counter gank and rotate. So, yeah, they have to be really, really careful. Well, and of course, even if Rave do fall behind early, they have the kind of lineup that came out a gigantic comeback. Empowered Medusa, mass team fight. Secret thus far, when they get leads, have been very good at starving opponents. Oh, are we going to see a jump on top lane? No, Chrissy retreating out. But that doesn't mean that 
they're they're going to continue to play perfect. At some point, you know, mistakes are bound to happen, and they don't. They almost did in the newbie game. They were very lucky to close that out. Something that's been hurting Secret a lot is this Observer Ward blocking that top spawn. It's kept Kuro really underleveled, and it's given a lot of unnecessary experience to Chrissy. Did he try to deward it and fail, or did he just not buy sentries? I don't believe he bought sentries. I okay. think he went with boots first. Yeah, I mean, perhaps the Enigma makes up for it. Puppy hitting level 6? Yeah, I think they could have done both. I, right. Because Kuro hasn't been mid at all, so he's just been trying to zone out Mag and uh, trying to get some levels. By and Chrissy continues to get a lot out of this off for an offlane mag he had the one fissure block and that's it he's had no help since then and uh, it goes back to that ward that you mentioned six, six minute rune see a couple of heroes go in but looks like chrissy will be the only one there exactly at the spawn free one for Cass on the bottom lane not so bad for them yes Tread's already up on shadow fiend Puppy just content to continue jungling here. Do you do you expect him to be the early mech carrier for this team, Ben? I mean, mm. Necrophos, I guess, can go for it, but we don't see that too often nowadays. I think they need to hit with one X okay. if they want. And it also depends on what build Necro goes for. If Necro goes for a blink, I think they can be blink bros. Okay, so then maybe mech on the Enigma and, and the double blink on the other two. Yeah. I think yeah. That and he will buy the better. headdress now. It's unclear as what to Necropos' build is. I don't think he can end the game early versus Rave's lineup. Um, just because it's like Fissure Block on high ground and like the threat of a Blink Skewer is, is just too much. Yeah, they you could tell Secret were a bit worried about that in the draft. They banned the Batrider second phase, but... Yeah, that's an amazing... Magnus is kind of a good replacement for the Magnus. Or uh, for the Batrider in that sense. Mm -hmm. Not as good as Bat. Still decent. So Secret just have to get a lot of Roches and out-economize the other team. And of course, you know, get BKBs versus like Shaker and Brew and whatnot. Yeah, uh, they are topping the CS chart. Secret accruing a very substantial lead on the back of the Enigma. Now up 3,500 gold, 4,000 experience. You expect some advantage for them, but this is a pretty immense lead to have this early on. There's just absolutely no interruption on Puppy. Like, Puppy doesn't even care. There's not a care in the world for him. Shadow Fiend, no pressure, no even attempted ganks. I guess some fissures, if you can call that ganks at all. S4's just been free farming on top, and the only thing that's been happening for bottom lane has been uh, the the one kill on Axe. But these supports don't have don't have smokes, and I don't really think they can make a move without it. Yeah, they seem and Rave seems to just be all in on the idea that they they will, may fall behind, but just farm the Medusa, get the blinks on their two initiators, and just try to take it super Sai late. going aggressively on cast. There is a fissure here, but no real follow up. So I will retreat. Maybe he even makes that Radiant's rotation to the jungle now and um, tries to work towards the blink. He's going to trot towards it. Puppy, no smoke for him. Wants to complete the mech. Is it coming out now? Arteezy went for a one point early in presence of the Dark Lord too. That means they can roach a little bit earlier if they want to. Yeah, not Radiant's a particularly common tower. build. Oh, he's going well, aggressively. Speaking of Arteezy. Oh, no. Or actually not Arteezy. Uh, Zai gets skewered up on the cliff. Nicely done. Meanwhile, Arteezy is diving cast mid. And one more auto attack. Gets the kill with the haste rune. Good cliff play here. Zai is going to be a sad boy. Curl's like, I, uh, I'm trying to stretch his arm out to hand him the TP up the cliff, but can't quite do it. <laughs> sad Zai. But yeah, Arteezy getting that kill on the Earthshaker. And these supports are, are going to become liabilities, it feels. Level 3 Earthshaker. He's got a 1,000 net worth. Ninja Boogie is doing decently, though. He gets the Arcane Boots, he's going to drop wards on the tower, and that is the one big thing with the Shadow Shaman. We've seen teams really struggle to trade towers effectively with Secret. They normally just take and, and give nothing in return. But with these wards, it looks like they will at least bring this tier 1 Oh, it's a Blink Dagger. It. Blink Dagger on Brew. I think he's going to go on Zai since he doesn't spot it out. But it's right when the Roche is happening. I wonder if Secret just ignore this and go for the Roche. It looks like they may let Zai die. TP in one hero's reinforcements. He'll call the Bruce, but S4 now joining. And Ninja Boogie, the first one man down. Can they even kill Zai in time? He's too tanky with the Tranquil Boots. And the, uh, the call, they're just hardly doing a thing to him. The split's going to end. Ryo has the Blink. Where is he going? They ping out Roche. They ping out Roche, they know. Can they get in here, though? Jo's walking in. He has Stone Gaze. Arteezy's pretty low. He's going to show his face outside the pit. Brew actually had the blink clap, but it looks like Zai's been able to get on him and cancel it. The clap burning Zai into danger zone territory. And calmly top lane, Chrissy, just farming away here while Kuro gets his levels. But they do thwart that Roche attempt. And they also get the tower kill for Ninja Boogie. 
Not too terrible for Rave. It's not that great for them. Brew can't so I mean, Brew hasn't been able to solo kill the Axe, which is pretty devastating, I think, for them. It's tough. With the start Zai had, he gets the Tranquil Boots, and when he calls Radiant's the split, the split really doesn't do much. You just have the immolation damage. Well, Shadowfiend did pick up a regen. Looks like he is transitioning into the Yule's build. Great verse. Brew in particular, I think, is where the split shines, especially if you're on land. You quick reflexes, low ping. Great environment to make big plays on a Blink Brew. Also, Blink Mag. Speaking of the Brew, bottom tower he smoked. Raver heading top. S4, though, already has point booster Ogre Club. There's just. There's no way you're getting him, and certainly not with the Bruce, but I actually don't know what the plan the is war here. Well, maybe with the Ward Trap. Kuroki's not level 6. They stun Ryo to start. He drops the Ward surrounding S4, but they might just be able to kill these Wards and get him out of there. They shackle him, hold him in position. There is a stun in 3 seconds. S4 dropping low to this, but he'll stick up and survive. Blink, clap, needs the crit. Ryo gets it. Maybe forfeits his own life, though, as the TP comes in from... From the Axe. Ward trying to cover the path of retreat. They go for two kills here using the Battle Hunger and Ninja Boogie. The wards are going to start chewing through Kuro, though, who wants to finish off Ryo. He's kept alive, and Ryo trying to find that Blink Clap. He blinks back. Kuro chasing forwards. I also on the hunt. He's in dunk range. Nearly Wave of Terror. Not enough. Can't get the kill. It'll back off. The Battle Hunger was cooling down. Somehow he survives. It works out really nicely getting that Necrophos kill. They also force everyone on Secret to rotate. And this frees up Chrissy Bottom, who is quite close to a blink for an offlane mag. He's got Arcanes, he's got 1900 gold. Radiant's top tower is under Not too shabby. They're good, doing a good job of spreading the map and actually applying some pressure now. First fortified. on Axe, then on the tower, then on this tower on top. And yeah, that was a difficult, very difficult kill for Ray to get. I'm glad they committed the blue master to, this, to that fight fallen. too. Yeah, he, he almost got his head chopped off. <laughs> even, even if you lose him there, killing off the Necrophos almost justifies it. It also creates a lot of space for the Magnus. He's going to have his blink pretty much now. Has a bounty room bottled up. Just needs to farm this this one stack here. So now Enigma probably looking attack. to get involved in fights. But the care package of the uh, the scent smoke obs combo and yeah. the mech. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice little present from from the parents. You know, get a little smoke. A little TP scroll. I wonder if it's going to be a Midas from Brew. He does pick up the gloves. I, wouldn't, I would say it's not the worst. Thing. I mean, they have their double blink combo, right? And they're already naturally very hard to push into. Uh-oh. Arteezy might be in a pickle here. Rave smoking into the pit. Do they actually try to steal this? There's Do they have shaman wards? I don't know. It's that's very that's risky, so though. Risky. <laughs> but they, it seems like they might even try for it. This is ballsy if they do. There's a sentry ward up on the high ground. The cyclone going to start things off, though, on Medusa. Now blinking forward is Ryo. He gets past the fissure. Actually, the fissure might end up hurting his team. Arteezy dropping low. They'll pop him quickly. Now they stone gaze. That's the Shadow Feet out of the fight, off the bat. He used the Yules offensively, and then had nothing to make his way out of here. Now Ninja Boogie chasing on to S4. The nuke's coming out. He gets off the shackle from the high ground. Zai tries to dunk. He's a little bit early. Two hero RP. The black hole from the high ground, though, turning this to counter Fissure. Breaking that black hole. J.O. running out of mana rapidly. He may go down here. It's up to Ryo, most likely, to engage and help him out. He can't do it. They even buy back on the Shaman. As Zai leaps forward, he gets Hex. And Rave are now in a headlong retreat. They're just lacking damage at this point. Shackling Zai under... No, actually not under tower. Just under catapult fire. This could be a dieback from Ninja Boogie. He's going to go down again. Ryo blinking in. He may also fall here. This is a chop. Nope, actually, he already, he already put on cooldown. Not even needed. Secret getting three kills plus the fourth kill on the Shaman dieback. And now the pain's coming out for Roche as Arteezy is going to look to strut in there immediately. You know, that's even a sloppy engage from Secret. Like, Arteezy used his Yules on the on the Medusa. I guess kind of threatening a push and then they just let, let him Radiant open to a uh, blink split combo. Chris, he wants to jump in here, it looks like. He has a shockwave. The blink skewer maybe tries to bring someone back up the cliff. No, not going to go. The, he might get Yules and just... Middle tower it has it fallen. just shows you that Rave need Radiant's a lot of items to hit hard in the fights. Attack. Until Medusa gets some damage, you have level one in power, and that's and that's about it. She died so quickly. Yeah. Once they focused her. At first they were kind of ignoring the Medusa, going for the shaman, uh, trying to keep the other heroes off of RTZ, but yeah, once they turned their attack. attention to that Medusa, she just melted. This is just not Rave's stage of the game. 
If they're trying to get this Brew Midas, Medusa's still a long way to go before a first item. J.O. really got styled on mid. Arteezy, it was pretty much a pure 1v1. Both team supports completely jungling, and you see the CS now. He's just way behind. Medusa can't win that second. Yeah. I think 1 through 6, she can do decently. Normally what teams do to make up for that is they just stack the Ancients a lot. But there's only a single stack here. Still, Secret hasn't done Roshi yet, so that's a somewhat more victory for him. Gotcha, in trouble. He's going to Stone Gaze. The Yules comes out from Arteezy. He's going to turn to Stone here, but I don't know if Jo makes it out. There's no backup. Oh, there's the Fissure. Okay. But still the chase. Ryo getting caught from the rear. He's going to blink it. He gets caught. Necrophos ult is online, but he splits first. Would have been quite enough damage to get the kill. Now cycloning the Necrophos, going on to Kuroki, but again, damage a bit lacking here. They're getting their spells off, and then nothing else really happens. So that's a waste of Stone Gaze, a waste of Brew Ultimate. For Do you just push if you're secret? Uh, yeah, definitely. They even have the Enigma mech online, and so I will just blink. Continue cutting the waves and applying pressure. Attack. The one thing Rave can do is I, just I rat with the wards. I think they might be able to, like, at least... Threaten high ground. Just force them back, at least, and then if they TP back, they will like There's already two heroes sitting in there. They they have a pretty scary uh, lineup to, to see, really, if Rave doesn't have an item. Blink, skewer mid onto Puppy. The ward's getting dropped. Now he has mech, though. will pop it. And in fact, Chrissy's been war trapped. Oh, Ninja Boogie, please. They swap Puppy up to the high ground. This just couldn't go any worse as Ninja Boogie will get caught. He's dunked from almost half health by Zai with the level two ultimate. They blow the wards, they blow the RP, and they lose both heroes. They don't even dent the tower, really. And this is not all. In the meantime, Ryo getting caught up by the Shadow Fiend here. He blinks out, but now the way to rush lies open. It's. Every little mistake is just being punished so hugely by Secret. I mean, that's that's brutal. That's what happens when you free from a nigga for 15 minutes. He gets Treads mech, and he's just in, in really difficult to kill. If you don't kill him, you just get black hole and die, or you just lose the fight like that. They blew two ults on him too. It's not like they didn't commit enough. I guess they didn't commit enough heroes, but those two heroes, they're just so light on damage. And and puppies tanky. I and mean, the combination of these two things is just. They have to blow the big ultis, and it's even if you get that kill, that's a four position enigma. And you've used RP and wards, at which point Secret are definitely Dyer's taking Roche regardless. That was a really smart ban, though. The Timber Assault ban. Like, looking at their lineup, it's just Mag doesn't do any damage. There's no cleaver, too, with Empower, which is a, a big issue. Yeah. Uh, so, but the strength is high ground hold. The strength is, I guess, very, very late game. Although, I think at this point, they might be able to just kite the Medusa. Have her sit in midnight poles. Yules her. The one thing that the one thing for Secret that really impresses me though is when they get these leads. To me, they're the best team in the tournament at extending a lead. They get the early lead. They farm the entire map well. They get good wards down. They pressure everywhere and they just starve the ever living crap out of their opponents. I mean, look at their wards. Though. It's one right outside the mid T2 and one in the Radiant jungle. Like, these are pretty deep wards. And this way they can see when Rave Ancients, too, which is going to be a significant source of their income. And, I mean, that's just scary if Secret always has eyes on you. Like, there's very little places that they don't have vision. I guess top lane, I suppose, is pretty much the only place, but... But they still have a tier 1 there, even, so it's still fairly well protected. I mean, look at where Arteezy was just farming. He's farming right outside the T2 with no backup around, so if he dies once, he's likely going to die twice. And he's asking. Well, Well, at this point, the Midas Brew definitely feels like the right item. It, it may not pay off, but they're getting a Vlad's or something at this stage would not, would not allow Rave to take these fights. So they're just going to basically turtle and go for ultra late game. Well, look at Necrolite. So Necrophos went BKB, and Enigma went Blink. So hmm. there are Blink Bros, but not the Blink Bros that I expected. Blink in from side. Just going to farm the wave. Yeah, that's generally the the other way around is what you would expect to see. It is a really good Enigma BKB game. Here they go. On Brewmaster in the bottom lane. Nope. It's Cyclone of Creep. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. Who is it? I, I remember seeing some player like using his Yules just to secure a last hit. Because <laughs> uh, his auto attack was on cooldown. Most random thing ever. Easy 50 damage. <laughs> the coolest is getting kills with it. Like hero kills. Yeah, just get the last hit. Chaos your teammates. I mean, see, look, this ward, they, they see these two. And 
like how Radiant are Rave supposed are to exert any pressure when and, and stop this like split push when they have vision? I think one of the supports just mans up and buys a gem. I think probably Shadow Shaman, and then they go around and deal ward. And then after he that, could can... buy one now. Of course, if he does that, then the dream of a blink is pretty much well, not I, happening. It's sacrificing his farm for the betterment of the team, and somebody has to do it. It does feel like they need. Either a gem or just some really good sentry ward placements, yeah. but it gets expensive. The sentry wards have missed. They have yeah. this one and this one, and it's, it's a guessing game. There's so many places they could have wards. They could have wards here, they could have wards on the high ground, they could have wards over here on the cliff, they could have wards in between the T2 and the T3. There's way too many options for uh, Secret to have good wards. Yeah, and it's one thing if you have your own wards up so you can see when they're planting them, but since they're in the dark, like you look at Radiant Vision right now, they see nothing outside of this one ward which was just planted. It, it's a total guessing game. Very difficult. And you can just see Secret kind of extending their tentacles out on the map. Now they're farming the Radiant Ancients. They were even taking over these camps, and Rave getting continuously more and more limited in terms of where they can go through vision, through starvation tactics. They're, they're looking a little emaciated now, Ben. Starving kids. Think of the children. Think of poor J.O. Yeah, I mean, Seeger just plays a really tight game with very few mistakes. And as, as you said, like, you give them a small lead, they'll get another 2,000 gold lead with that. And then, middle you know, they'll, they're just attack. really good at incrementing. Fisher coming out on Zai. Will they follow this up with anything? They do hex him. This is a dangerous hero to commit on. He's quite tanky. has a blink, force, and vanguard. Now Arteezy will TP in. They've dropped the wards. Those will be quickly farmed up. Tower is going to be denied. Radiant's so finally they get at least something. Attack. But it's a denied tower at that, and Secret congregating. They might even look to push in here. Ninja Boogie got a TP out. Zai actually very close to spotting him out. But again, there's just no freebies. Even when they take a tower, it requires the wards. The wards are then farmed by Secret, and they deny the tower as well. And the, the aggressive wards continue. This one's been planned on the high ground. The vision is just so one-sided. Yeah, I, I guess they just wait to just massacre them with like a 25, 30,000 gold lead. That's what it seems like right now. It, I think it's still too early to push high ground for Secret. Uh, they have Blink up on Mag, and that's pretty much enough to dissuade a, a push by a well-played Mag. Yeah, you get that one Blink skewer to start the fight, or, or like the 3-4 here RP, although that might be a bit more difficult. They do have a good tower siege, though. Like, they have Enigma Eidolons, and they have a uh, Shadow Fiend. They will have a Shadow Fiend with Aegis. And on top of that, they'll have uh, they'll have Necrophos for the sustain. So I, I still The other thing is they have it. the Venge. So even if someone gets caught out of position, they might still be able to, like, swap them back to safety. As Ninja Boogie will get trapped out by Zai here. He dared to leave the base, and he will be punished for it. Necrophos ult to finish him off. And See in 70 third, seconds. Yeah, that's a 70-second death death timer on the friggin' Shadow Shaman. It's the opposite of Shallow Grave. <laughs> it's a very deep, deep grave for him. As Arteezy's gonna prep a uh, black hole waiting for Ryo on the way down. This is two heroes for Rave who dared to venture forth. They both pay. And, and meanwhile, they just got two heroes strutting around mid. Rave have three, and they're the ones who probably need to be backing off as for charging. And he's throwing heal bombs out. They also don't hesitate, too. Like, okay, it's a Necrophos ult on a Ross. You'll see a lot of Necrophos players hold it for a more important target, but the fights are so few and far between. Black Hole and a Panda, whatever. I mean, we're, they're, they're just going to do it because they know they can get kills with it, and they know they can capitalize on each and every kill. Secret just continue to be surgical in all their movements. It's been very one side. They get the blink call. It's on two by Zion. He drags them in closer. His team chops the first. He will end up getting stone gaze, but I mean, really, you're not breeding an axe down with this. The damage, damage that he took during the stone gaze was actually pathetic. <laughs> that was pretty terrible. 12 armor, has the vanguard. <sighs> it's rough. They're just not making mistakes, Ben. I don't know what you do when you fall behind this early. They even made decent efforts to get out on the map, like from the, I don't know, the 10 to 20 minute mark. But every time they did, Secret were prepared. They TP'd in pretty quickly. There was the one kill top where they got the, the kill on... Uh, who was it? The Necrolite, and then got out. But that was it. Radiance bottom tower They've had one clean fallen. kill the entire game, and that almost wasn't a clean kill, even at that. Radiance bottom tower Secret looking good. Attack. 
They still have some tough opponents, e.g. Vici Gaming, the two main ones, but it looks like this game is well in their hands. They're already confident to breach high ground against this amazing five-man defense that Rave have on paper, even at 25 minutes. They're not going to fully commit, though. Perhaps waiting for the next Roche. Could be respawning any second now, and just a, a textbook move here. You push in the bottom lane all the way to the tier three, and then you immediately back off. Check the Roche, and if it's up, you just take it right away. They still have ways to counter initiate on Mag too. Like the high ground defense is difficult, but only if Mag gets like a blink skewer in into like a phone call. Uh, as you said, they have the swap. They also have a four staff up, up on Ventral Spirit. Oh, uh, does she? Uh, I believe so. Oh, uh, coming on the courier. Yeah, so they have a four staff on Band. They also have like a Yules on the Mag can also stop that initiate and mm -hmm. just lead to a kill. They also have like Malefist on Enigma that can stop it. A Blink ba Black Hole to counter initiate. A Blink Axe call to counter initiate. So, like, the high ground is difficult, but it's not impossible if Secret Watch are, you know, r really fast at reacting to. To what Rave is going to do. Well, and it certainly doesn't hurt when you've got that 20k golden experience lead. Four of the top five farmers are on secret. And they're they're just waiting for the next Roche at this point. They get this Roche uh, item-wise. I guess they could wait for this S4. No, he's already completed. Shiva's is out. Any other big items? Butterfly out. I guess the BKB and Arteezy. You get the BKB on Arteezy, you just complete the Shivas on Necrophos. You have your Venge Force Staff to deal with any Fissure Block shenanigans, and... Outside of that, they're ready to go high ground. Maybe they wait for Puppy's BKB if he wants to buy it. He's got 3.3k gold. Outside of that, I think they've got all the tools they need. It will take a, a very spirited, borderline miraculous defense to, to hold out. Agreed. Chances of comeback... What would you say? 1%? Not 1. It, 10. I mean, yeah, less than 10. 5. It, it's, this is a really, really difficult position for Rave. Not 100% out. And this is a team that won't give up too early. They blink clap on Zai. I mean, they have the blink skewer play, but they... You look at their vision, and they have really limited ideas as to what's behind them. They do see the Necrophos, but for all they know, there's three heroes sitting right here. They can't kill anyone quickly. Like, the burst is almost non-existent. You have one, like... Shockwave, like lightning from Shaman, and maybe like an Echo Fissure combo, but even that, that's like a thousand damage. Man. Mystic Snake, and throw on another couple hundred. J.O. starts slithering out into the mid lane, but Arteezy's gonna greet him. Tosses out the Yule Scepter. There are four Hero Smoke behind him, although it's pretty obvious, I think, for Secret that that is the case. As you look at their vision right now, and there's literally nobody on the map from the Radiant side, outside of the Earthshaker, which just got revealed. So they'll back off. They're going to TP on to the bottom lane, and as soon as that's spotted, actually even before it is, Secret into the Roche Pit. Straightforward. Now the BKB up on the Shadow Fiend, the BKB up on the Enigma. S4 probably going to complete his Aghanim Scepter. And, um, I thought he had more gold. Oh, no, he bought the Sheepus. That's right. Roshan has fallen to the dark. Rages for the books. Oh, I, I meant the, the Ags on the Axe. That's right. Side's about to complete his, but... Level 3 chop coming soon. And at that point, what's the chop threshold here with the eggs? It's uh, 625. We're looking at a, a Shadow Shaman who dies from over half health. That's like one, one Shadow Fiend right click, one raise, and a chop. Get cold. Brutal. Simply brutal. Secret just making it look easy. There's been almost no action as of late, and... You can see the last time that Rave got a kill was 14 minutes. It's been pure starvation. They've been on the liquid diet here ever since, and they're starting to show the effects. The secret. Begin to pincer them in. They want to push in all three lanes before they go for the high ground breach. The axe dealing with top. The other four towards the southern side of the map. Not too much longer until they'll try and go high ground, it seems. Yeah. Four minutes. Radiant's top tower Four minutes to make attack. a move. And it's longer than a black hole cooldown. They're just leaving nothing to chance. Like, even... Oh, this could be it, though. Blake Skewer onto S4. The Echo Slam used to try and burst him down, but they get off the swap. S4 is kept alive. Now the black hole, not very good. Only gets Jo, and then he's turned into a stone gaze. Even with all their preparations and backup plans, it will be good enough. RP comes through on three, but Rave a bit lacking for damage. The Fissure connecting as well from the side. Comes Artor. He'll slash through Jo. He brings down the Shaman as well, and with that, fights his way against the wards. He may end up going down here once. The Boulder Toss coming out. 
they do buy back on that Medusa and look to re-engage. Yule Scepter keeping him alive and he will fall, but still has the Aegis. They've used RP, they've used the Bruce Split. They get the Blink Skewer once more though. The Vengeful Spirit is dead. Maybe, just maybe they can hold this high ground. Oh no, not like this. Double dunk, triple dunk. Is it gonna be a quad? Oh, he actually only gets a triple. Someone else got the last hit there, but either way. Now, that's another crazy. chop. No, he's out of mana. That's that's just That was a sick call by Zai. It, I mean, Rave had a good game plan there. Fissure. Blink skewer. That's a great way to start off the fight, but they're they're just too far. Uh, he four-stepped him away. I don't think initially he was uh, close enough to the cliff, but he four-stepped him away. He swapped him down, and then Venge sacrificed their life. Blink black hole, and then Arteezy on the bottom side. They uh, they also had a very good uh, pincer movement too. Like it's Shadow Fiend on the bottom, the other few on the top, so that Shadow Fiend doesn't get caught in an RP. And he dealt with the Panda ult by his lonesome. But you can see why Secret took their sweet time with that game. Because if they try to do that when they're yeah. like 10, 15k ahead, they they maybe don't have that extra four staff on the Venge or, you know, the, the, 11 the Shadow Fiend dies a bit quick.